Question number one, evaluate 4 over 11 minus 2 over 7. So we have to find a common denominator. So the first thing we have to do is we multiply those two numbers. So 11 times 7 is 77. And then we cross multiply. So 4 times 7 is 28 minus 11 times 2 will be 22, which is 28 minus 22 is 6 over 77. And that is your answer. Okay, moving on to part B. We have 0 0.9 multiply 0 0.011. The trick is to multiply those two numbers first. So 9 times 11 is what? It's 99. So now we have 1, 2, 3 decimal place and 1 decimal place. So yeah, we add all the decimal place. It will be 4 decimal place in total. So we move 1, 2, 3, 4. Here we go. So that's the number for this calculation. 0 0.0099. Question number two. Cecile bought a camera for $120, and after two years, he sold it for $90. Calculate the percentage loss. So the first thing we have to calculate the loss. So the loss is equal to 120 minus 90, which will be 30. Now, percentage loss will be the loss over initial amount, which will be 120 times 100. So that will be right, divided by 3. We have 10. Divided by 3 will be 4. By 2 will be 5 and 2 will be 5. So 5 times 5 is 25. So 25% is your answer. Okay, so now part B is some money is shared between Miriam and Nina in the ratio of 2 to 3. Okay, so what percentage of the total money shared does Miriam receive? So Miriam is M, Nina is N, so Miriam is 2 over 3, three uh, 2 and then 3. So what is the total number of shares? Is 2 plus 3, we have 5. 5 is a total number of shares. So how many shares does Miriam receive? She receives only 2 shares, so it will be 2 over 5, which is the total number of shares, times 100. That will be percentage, because we're asking for the percentage of the share that she received. So divide by 5, that will be 20. So 2 times 20 is 40. So 40% 40 is the answer. Now moving on to part C. So given that A ratio B is 5 to the 6. Okay. So now we say B to C is 3 to 8. Now we have to find A, B, C. So we know that A, B is 5 to 6. And we know that B, C is 3 to 8. So let's multiply by 2 for this both side. We get 6, and that will be 16. 8 times 2 is 16. So now we can compare. So A, B is 6, so C will be 16. So that says A is 5, B is 6, and C is 16. Question number 3. We have 0 0.05 minus 0 0.3, 1.3 minus 1.2, and 0 0.2. Arrange the five numbers in order, starting with the smallest. So in the list above, which number is the smallest? So we know that negative are small, so we have to choose the one which is the more negative. So that would be this one. So minus 1.2 is the smallest, and then we have minus 0 0.3. And then we have 0 0.05, 0 0.2, and then 1.3. That's pretty easy. Okay, so now point B, we have to, for the five numbers, we have five numbers in total, find the mean. The mean is we have to add every numbers and then divide by five, which is every, basically the sum of the numbers is five. Not the sum, but the number of numbers we have is five. So we have to do the sum, divide by 5. 
So what is the sum? Sum is minus 1.2 plus minus 0 0.3 plus 0 0.05 plus 0 0.2 plus 1.3. So this two will be minus 1.5 and this two is plus 1.5. So minus 1.5 plus 1.5 cancels out. Remaining will be 0 0.05 divide by 5 will be 0 0.01 and that's your answer okay so what is the range of the numbers the range is the largest value minus the smallest value so what is the largest value it is 1.3 minus the smallest value is minus 1.2 that will be minus minus become plus so 1.3 plus 1.2 is 5, 2. 2.5 is the range. Question number 4, we have y in is inversely proportional to the square of x. So the first line gives you this information. y is inversely proportional will be 1 over x square, which is the same as y is equal to k over x squared. So that's the first information we have from this line. So now we have y is equal to 10 when x is equal to 3. So we have to find the value of k. So k is equal to, so we have to cross multiply. So k is equal to y times x squared. y is 10 times x squared is 9. So k is 90. So now the equation is what? Is y equal to 90 over x squared. So now we have to find y when x is equal to half. So what is y when x equal to half? So we have to replace x in this equation. So y equal to 90 divided by half squared. It will be 90 divided by 1 over 4 it will be 90 times 4 over 1 it will be 360 and that is your answer 360 question number five we have part a factorize 25 t square minus 4 so we can see that 25 is actually 5 square 4 is actually 2 square so we replace them in the equation we have 5 square t square minus 2 square which is equal to 5 t square minus 2 square so we know that a square minus b square is equal to a plus b a minus b so we have to replace these values so for example we say this is a and this is b so this will give us 5 t plus 2, 5t minus 2. And that is your answer. Okay, moving on to uh, part B. So we have factorize x squared minus 6x minus 3xy plus 18. So we see the term x here and here and here, and the term y is here and here. So we, let's separate those two. So let's put x squared minus 6x on this side plus minus 3xy plus 18y so what is common with those two x is common so we take x out now we have x remaining minus 6 right plus what is common with those two y is common and then 3 is common so remaining we have minus x plus 6. So we have x, x minus 6 plus. So you see the signs here are different. So we have plus here, minus here. So let, let, let's make it minus here. So we take out minus sign, minus 3y. So we will have x minus 6. So now we see those two are the same. We take it out, we get x minus 6. And then we have x minus y remainder so that's the factorization of this function of this uh, equation
So that's it for part B. Question number six. A rectangle has length of 64 millimeters and width of 37 millimeters, each correct to the nearest millimeters. Part A. Write down the lower bound for the length. The lower bound will be 63.5. And now part B. Calculate the lower bound for the perimeter of the rectangle. So how do you find the perimeter? So let's draw um, a rectangle. So we have this side, this side, this, and this. So we have to find the lower bound. The lower bound for the length is 63.5, 63.5. So what is the lower bound for the width? It will be 36.5, 36.5. So now we have to add everything up to find the lower bound for the perimeter. So let's add them up. So 63.5 plus 63.5, these two sides will be what? 5 plus 5 is 10. So we have 3 plus 3 is 6, plus 1 is 7. 6 plus 6 is 12. Okay, and now we have 36.5 plus 36.5. 5 plus 5 is 10. Go here. So 6 plus 6 is 12, plus 1 is 13. And then we have 7. So we have to add 127 plus 73. So 7 plus 3 is 10. 2 plus 7 is 9, plus 1 is 10. So it goes here, will be 2. So 200 mm will be the lower bound for the perimeter of the rectangle.